So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to get your characters on the screen. So obviously we are going to be starting the first episode for this story. My story is stuck with you, the road to redemption, but yours is obviously going to say something else for whatever story you're writing. All we're going to do is we're going to go down over here to where it says new episode, left click on there and it will start to open up the portal and the page where we're going to actually be coding our stories. Okay, so now that everything's loaded up, let's first have a look at all of the options that we have. First of all, we are under the tab that says my stories, which is obviously going to allow us to write our story. Then certain things that we're going to be using in this tutorial is the preview pane over here. So if you click on this arrow, it's going to open up the preview pane and that's going to allow us to actually see our story on our computers without having to necessarily download the app to see the story. I definitely use this all the time when I am writing a story just because it allows you to navigate to a specific line of code where you can actually see what those animations and the camera zooms and what everything looks like. So I really like this. Another thing I like to do that helps me out a lot is to enable track script because you'll see exactly what it does once we preview. It allows us to go line by line and see where we want to make changes or where there was a mistake. So this is definitely what we're going to be using. In this tutorial another thing to note is that over here in our library it shows us all of the characters that we have currently like i said i've only created alice and james thus far so i'm going to be using these two characters in this tutorial this is not necessarily how my story is going to go this is just for the sake of the tutorial so it starts off with this text that's pretty much there once you open this up and it says int black knight then it says narrator to be continued each one of these does something different. In Black Knight is a background that you can use in your episode story. So we're going to be speaking about backgrounds a little bit later on. The narrator is the text box that you see pop up at the beginning. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't have any characters on screen. And in fact, I'm going to go from line one and just click preview. And it will say previewing from line one. And you'll see what track script does. So that's currently we are on line one and the background is black and it's called int dot black knight. Int indicates that it is an interior background. So there are interior backgrounds and exterior backgrounds, but again, we will cover that in a different tutorial. And this white box over here with nothing, there is no names or anything and there are no characters on screen. That is the narrator and the text that the narrator is displaying or what the narrator is saying is to be continued so that is the basis of what our code is going to look like on the screen we're starting off with a background a character in this case the narrator is our character and dialogue so in this part of the video i'm just going to be showing you how we are going to get the characters on screen so we are looking at how to place the characters on screen using the commands that come with donna code and that is specifically made for episode stories. Then we're going to look at spot directing and scaling our characters to have them situated on a specific location and looking a certain size. And then we're also going to be looking at layers and how the characters just look differently according to the layers that they're in. So as we said, um, Alice and James are our only characters in the story. So I'm going to start off by having... Alice appear on the screen and we're going to have James actually walk in into the frame as well. So I'm going to just delete the narrator's text. I'm going to leave the background as in Black Knight just because we are going to do backgrounds a bit later on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to backspace all the way to number two. Obviously we are in code line number two. And the way that we call upon characters is we're going to use the add symbol on our keyboard. Type in the character's name in all capital letters. So at, wow, at Alice, we're going to use the stands command, which is going to already have the character on screen. So there aren't going to be any animations where they walk on screen. They're already going to be there once the scene starts, which is what I want Alice to be doing in this tutorial. So all I'm going to say is Alice stands screen right. Then I'm going to type AND, again in all caps, her name has been all caps, Alice, faces, wow, faces left. That's all I'm going to type this for. So what's going to happen is 
Alice is our character, is going to be standing. This is why we use the word stands. Screen right is the position of where she's going to be standing on the screen. So with episode, there's screen left, which is the space over here. Then there's going to be screen center, and then there's going to be screen right. There are also commands as up screen left, uh, up screen right, but in this tutorial, I'm just starting off with the basic commands. So Alice stands screen right, so Alice is going to be standing over here. And then I added the keyword and to indicate that Alice is doing more than one thing at the same time. And Alice faces left. So you've got to be very specific on where you want your character standing on the screen and also where you want them to face because without this, Alice would potentially be standing screen right but facing right and I want it to face left. So you've got to be very specific. So what I'm going to do, just so you see what that looks like, I'm going to go all the way to line one and then I'm going to go to save and preview and that should be what's happening on the screen. Perfect. So Alice is standing screen right and she's facing left. Let's see what happens if I take this code out. So I'm just going to delete it. Go back to line one and click save and preview. If you're lucky, she's going to already be facing the way that you want it to. But if you find that your character is facing the wrong way, then use the and the name faces that way. See, for example, she's standing screen right. So she, without that code, she automatically faces right. I'm just going to undo and have a face left again. Then I'm going to have our other character whose name is James. I'm going to have him walk in from the left side of the screen to the left side of the screen and I want him to face right. So I'm going to type at James, all capital letters. So instead of saying stands because he's not going to already be appearing, he's going to physically walk onto the screen into that specific spot. So we're going to say James enters because he's entering the scene enters from left because he's going to be coming from the left side of the screen to screen left and then i'm going to type and james faces right so james is going to enter from this side Obviously, we don't want him entering from the side because he's going to overlap with her in this scenario. You, there are definitely stories where that happens, but... And it actually looks good. It looks cool because it's like they're entering from one side of a, of a room. But in this case, I want them to be opposite. So I want him to come in from the left side and he's going to stop in screen left. So he's going to walk from the left to... You have to type in to screen left. And then again, I'm going to command him to face right so let's go and save and preview so this is one of the things that happens nowadays with episode if you just indicate that they've got to enter from one side of the screen to another side of the screen for some reason the men are always shorter than the women I don't know why that is it's really annoying but this is where spot directing and scaling comes in handy so I use this a lot because I want to sometimes make the, I want to make it look as though he is taller than her. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here into my preview pane and you can find this on your phone as well. If, if you are previewing this on your phone, it has the same options. So you go to show helpers and then you go down to spot directing. And as you can see, it automatically highlights him. But let's say I wanted to make changes to her. I could go over here to change char which is for change character, and then I can move her around. But she's not the problem here. I'm going to click on change char, and then it allows me to move him pretty much anywhere that I want. So I want him to still be screen left, but I want him to be slightly taller to give the appearance again that he is taller than her. So I'm moving him up a bit, and you'll see what happens as I'm moving him around, if I just scroll down a bit. As I'm moving him around, these spot numbers are changing because he's going to be in a specific location now it is as if he's moving according to a grid so i'm gonna have him stand in this location if i wanted to scale him i could go over here to switch tool and click on there and then it will allow me to scale him to be bigger or smaller or i can leave him at the scale that he's at again you see these numbers are changing and then i can just switch it again and move him wherever and this doesn't change how big or small he is, it just changes where he appears on the screen. 
So I'm going to have him about there. And then what it says here is at James spot. And it gives the exact location of where he is. So 1.271.7739 in zone 1. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on copy just to copy James's location. If I click on copy stage, it's going to give me the location of James and Alice. But I like where Alice is. So I just want James's details. So it copies that and then I'm just going to paste it in here. Control V. And it gives me this exact location now. So it says James spot and it gives me the spot in zone 1. We're going to look at zones a little bit later. I want to focus on the layering as well. So we're looking at the spot and scaling and then the layers. So if I'm going to leave this as is, then James is just going to appear on the screen. To have the same effect as if he was walking from the left side of the screen to screen left. I'm going to have him pretty much on the same level and I'm just going to move him a bit off the screen so that we can't see him. And then I'm going to copy that location. I'm going to paste it on top. And then I'm just going to delete this because that clearly doesn't look nice. So let's just make some space here. So James is currently in this location, he's off screen, we can't see him, right? This is pretty much where we are setting the scene before they interact with each other, before there's dialogue, before certain things are happening. So we're setting the scene. What I want is for James to walk to the spot where he's on the screen and he's taller than Alice. So he's going to be walking from this spot off screen to this spot. And then all I'm going to add here is walks to... And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I like to keep at least one blank line in between my code just so that it's not very messy. So let's see what this looks like. I know that this is probably so overwhelming if you're a beginner, but just bear with me. It's going to make sense eventually. Excellent. So he still entered from the left. This is just a bit more technical. But as you can see, he's taller than what she is right now. And that's exactly what I wanted for this part of the video. And then he is in layer two. So if I click on Alice, I'm going to go again to show helpers, spot directing. And if I change to Alice and you can see which character is selected. So Alice is selected. They're both in layer two. So layering is going to help us when, so let's say for example, they're going to hug. You obviously don't want them on the same layer because then it's just going to clash. So you want one character in a layer higher than the layer that the other character is in, for example. So layering is going to help a lot when the characters are kissing, for example, or if they're hugging, or if we've got characters like right in front of the screen and, and separate characters in the background, that's where layering is going to come in handy. So the higher the number is for the layer, the closer to the screen the character is going to be. It's kind of difficult to show this with just two characters, but later on in the tutorials, you will see where the layers come in again. And so that's all I wanted to show in this tutorial was just how to place them on the screen, how to use the stands, how to use enters from, how to use the layers and also using spot directing and scaling to make it look good.